We lift you up, Father God. We magnify you this morning, Father. We glorify you this morning, God. We just thank you, God, for bringing us out this morning, Father God, to fellowship with the saints this morning, God. And we thank you, God, for your loving arms of protection over us, God. Thank you for covering us, Lord, with your blood, with your spirit, and with yourself, Father. And then we thank you for being a promise-keeping God. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Father, that you said you would rise again, Father God. And God, you are risen Savior. We serve a risen Savior. God's not dead. Hallelujah. He's yet alive. God, we just praise you this morning. Father, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. We thank you for the service this morning, God. And we invite you here, Father God, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness.
All right. And the young lady in red. There are two ladies in red. Two ladies in red.
from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the educational building. Lunch will be sponsored by Chick-fil-A. Therefore, we will need a mixer. If you are interested, please call the church office by April 5th, 2023 at 215-438-1060, extension 13. Thank you.
I do all the prayer. Because we're all the prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. verses 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Let us pray. Father God, we praise your holy name for you are worthy to be praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. Father God, we come confessing, Lord God, that we haven't done all that we should have done, Lord. And we've done some things that we should not have done. So we just ask that you would please forgive us for our sins and have mercy, Lord God, on us where we have fallen short. Lord, we come thanking you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for watch care. We thank you for this church, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Solomon for blessing us with a fine pastor. We thank you, Lord, for just keeping us, Lord, for providing food for us and for providing shelter, for blessing us abundantly and in a mighty way. We thank you for keeping us and giving us a reasonable portion of health that we're able to come out today. Lord, we come also asking you, Lord God, that you would watch over those who couldn't make it today, those that are on our sick and shuddering list, Lord God, that you would please touch them with a hand of healing. Those that are here today that are not feeling 100%, we pray, Father God, that you would help our health, Lord, and that you continue to watch over us. Lord, we ask that you would watch over our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and so on. We pray for the future of this church, Lord, that we will have a church for them, Lord God, and not just at Corinthian, Lord, but around this city, Lord, and around the country. And Lord, we pray for our uh, country, Lord God, because we know what's going on, and we just pray that your will be done. We pray for those, Lord God, in the city and around the cities in this country that are in poverty, Lord God. And you know the types of problems that come from that. We pray, Lord God, for your help, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you would watch over us with safety, Lord. You know all the shootings and the violence that's going on, and you know the root causes of it. And we ask for your help, Lord, your intervention. And we also ask for your mercy. And Lord, we just praise your holy name, Lord. And uh, again, we say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. And we ask that you continue to watch over our families and keep us under protection around them and around us. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen. to the Lord, for he is good. Yeah. His faithful love endures forever. Uh -huh. 
Let Israel say, his faithful love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his faithful love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his faithful love endures forever. Yeah. I call to the Lord in distress. Mm -hmm. The Lord answer me and put me in a spacious place. The Lord is for me. Yes, sir. I will not be afraid. Mm -hmm. What can a mere mortal do to me? Mm -hmm. You would now go to verses 19 through 29. Open the gates of righteousness for me. I will enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is the Lord's gate. The righteous will enter through it. I will give thanks to you because you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Yes, sir. This came from the Lord. Uh -huh. It is wondrous in our sight. Yes, sir. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us success. Mm -hmm. He who comes in the name of the Lord is blessed. Mm -hmm. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God and has given us life. Bind festivals, sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. Uh -huh. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God. I will exalt you. Yes, sir. Give thanks to the Lord. Uh -huh. For he is good. Yes. His faithful love endures forever. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Corinthian. I just want to um, say two quick things. Um, the announcement has been made. We have been speaking about this for the last several weeks, uh, about the out upcoming program on April the 11th here at the community center from 11 to 1 with the, uh, the final expense planning specialist association. Um, all of us are aware of the need for us to have our business taken care of. Amen? Amen. And time will not 
prevail right now to talk about the amount of wealth that we're losing in our families because we don't take care of our business the way we ought to. Amen. 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 Parents, grandparents have worked for years, paid off properties, and because we didn't do due diligence in certain areas, many families have lost those properties. And so on April 11th, we're seeking to help us address some of those concerns. We're dealing with wills, living wills, power of attorney, prepaid through services. So many of us are rushing and scrambling because we're on fi fixed incomes. But since we all know that one day we have to die, amen? amen? It may behoove us to begin to do some planning ahead of time amen. so that we don't have to scramble and make a hard situation even worse. And so I want to really encourage you all to come and participate. Come get, hear the presentation. Get the information so that you can have uh, what you need to make some, not only some wise decisions, but to continue to allow the blessings that God has invested in you to continue to perpetuate to the next generations. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know God is concerned about the transfer of wealth, right? Amen. He's the God of not only Abraham, mm -hmm. but he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and And so I want to encourage you to be there. Now, to be totally honest with you, um, as a pastor, I'm, I'm trying to you know, speak in a very spiritual and professional way. But what got my attention about wanting to come is when I saw that Chick-fil-A is going to be providing the food. <laughs> Amen. And so even if right now you're not convinced about the presentation itself, why don't you just come and get some food from Chick-fil-A? Hear what they have to say, and then I'll let you make your decision from there. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Sound like you're going to be here early then, right? All right. Okay. All right. But really, on, on, on the serious tip, y'all, it's, it's a very, very, very important topic that we need to um, become more and more informed of so that not only... We can benefit, but we want to pass this knowledge on to the next generations. Amen? Amen. And then finally, before we move on, um, most of you are already aware that in, uh, before I came back to Corinthian, in April of 2021, my baby brother died and went home to be with the Lord. And uh, these four brothers back here, that are here uh, visiting with us this morning. Uh, Rich, Daryl, Keith, and I call them Camp. Uh, we all, they surrounded me and my family. They loved us, they supported us, they encouraged us. We did not have a need Amen. that went unmet. Amen. And uh, I just want to publicly <laughs> thank those brothers. Love y'all, man. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and finally, finally, uh, this morning, Palm Sunday, they, they didn't even know this, but today is my 13th year of preaching. Amen. amen. And so, uh, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And so, uh, I'm, I'm happy this morning. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm glad, glad to be here this morning. So continue to pray for one another. Um, you know, I just spoke, spoke about the death of my family, but 
Uh, we are experiencing death all around us. Uh, we've had about five, six, seven funerals over the last two weeks, seem like. And we have another one tomorrow morning, okay, uh, for our beloved brother Logan. And I said you would keep him and his family in prayer at this time. Amen? Amen. Let us continue in worship.
Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, we, your people, humble ourselves before you even right now. We humble ourselves before you, recognizing that you are God and we are not. And because you are God and God alone, because you are our creator, because you keep and sustain your people, we worship you even right now. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you for love. We thank you for family. We thank you for friends. We thank you for the Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, this place where you have ordained to meet with your people at this time and at this very moment. God, we need you. God, we need you. We need you. And so, God, we ask that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds. Give us grace to hear what it is that the Spirit is saying to us at this time. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and you are our most blessed Redeemer. Let us all say amen. It's Palm Sunday morning. Amen. Palm Sunday is one of the great holy days on the Christian calendar. It's a day of celebration. And so I don't know about you, um, I feel like celebrating this morning, amen? amen. Anybody feel like celebrating this morning? God has been good to us. God has been good to us. The scripture has been read in your hearing from Psalm 118. And I would encourage you in your devotional time to go back and read the entire 118th Psalm. Very, very, very powerful psalm. And a psalm that's directly related to the Palm Sunday experience. But I told you that Palm Sunday is a day of celebration, right? And so it's no surprise when you read Psalm 118. Listen, listen to verse 1, the very first verse. Psalm 118 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. That, that's enough to celebrate right there, ain't it? And then, as if to put a, a book in on this psalm, if you flip all the way down to Verses 28 and 29. Verse 28, it says, You are my God, and I will give you thanks. So, sounds personal, don't it? You are my God. I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His faithful love endures forever. With God's help this morning, <clears throat> I would like to preach and teach from the thought, a Palm Sunday pray. A Palm Sunday praise. We still believe in praising the Lord here, don't we? 
This Sunday is universally known as Palm Sunday because it's the anniversary of our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When the people went out to meet him with palm branches in their hands. It's the time when the church turns its attention to what Christ has done for us. But today, but today, on, on this Palm Sunday, I want us to go a step further, y'all. Because what Christ has done for us, hear me, is also to be done in us. Let, let me say that again. What the Lord has done for you, God also wants to do in you. Now, if we're going to go a step further to understand what Christ wants to do in us, we must ask ourselves the question. And the question is, how should we respond to God's love and mercy in our life? Has anybody here experienced God's love and mercy before? Yeah. Amen. And so if you have experienced God's mercy, have you experienced God's love, then God requires a response. And so I would like to suggest to you that Psalm 118 Helps us to answer that question. Psalm 118 lets us know that the answer to the question of how we ought to respond to God's love and mercy is that we ought to respond with a Palm Sunday praise. Can, can I talk about a Palm Sunday praise for a little bit, y'all? <clears throat> this, this Psalm 118, this Psalm from the hymn book of Israel has been a favorite song of the faithful for many years. It, it was sung during the Passover celebration. Y'all remember the Passover, don't you? It, it was also the last psalm that Jesus and his disciples sang at the Last Supper before they left for Gethsemane to pray. But most importantly for us today, y'all, Psalm 18 is the song that was being sung and recited by the crowds when Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. They, they sang this song because it's a song of faith. And we too can sing this song today by faith. It, it's a song that speaks about Jesus, the Messiah, who is our Lord and our Savior. How many of you know that Jesus Christ is still the Lord? It, this is a Christian church, isn't it? How many of you know that Jesus Christ is still the Lord? Well, I, I want to talk to you about this Palm Sunday praise this morning, y'all. What, what type of praise this is? And how you and I can give this type of praise together. Somebody say together. together. Now, when we look at verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 118. You still have your Bibles open, y'all? When, when we look at verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 18. We see that a Palm Sunday praise is first of all a praise of gratitude. I said. Verses 1 and 2. Teaches us that. A Palm Sunday praise is first of all. A praise of gratitude. L listen to the verses again y'all. Oh give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let Israel say. His mercy endures forever. Now the, now, the question is, why are they praising God? Why, why are they thanking God? Well, the nation is praising God 
for what God is doing in the life of this individual, the psalmist. You see, the psalmist here is giving his testimony. Anybody here have a testimony this morning? The, the psalmist is giving his testimony. And, and as we all know, we can't have a testimony without first passing the test. And, and the test was that God was allowing him to be attacked by his enemies. The Bible says that the psalmist's enemies, go back and read Psalm 118. The psalmist's enemies were surrounding him. They, they had surrounded him like a swarm of bees. And to make matters worse, verse 13 says that someone behind him pushed him in his back to try to make him fall. Do you get the picture here, y'all? He, he's surrounded by his enemies. He's preoccupied by what he sees. But behind him, somebody comes and pushes him in his back to try to make him fall. And so, the psalmist is fenced in. His enemies had them, had him right where they wanted him. Have you ever been there before, y'all? Have, have you ever been surrounded by your haters who were talking dirty about you and calling you everything but a child of God? Have, have you ever been in a situation where the people around you were doing everything in their power to make sure that you fail? Have you ever been, you ever felt like you were fenced in? Like, like folks around you pushing you and provoking you to fall. Or, or pushing and provoking you to cuss them out. Oh, I wish I could talk to some honest people this morning. But, but the psalmist, the psalmist didn't do anything to destroy his testimony. We, we know the psalmist passed the test because verse 5 says that instead of fighting fire with fire, in his distress, he called on the Lord. I said he called on the Lord, y'all. And, and the songwriter says, when you call on the Lord, you will get a... I wish I had a witness here this morning. I said the psalmist. He, he couldn't have rolled up his sleeves to fight back. But instead of fighting fire with fire in his distress, he called on the name of the Lord. And because he called out to God in prayer, hear me, the Lord did not allow his enemies to defeat him. He overcame his adversary because of the hand of the Lord. That's why, the, that's why the Bible says that the battle is not, it's the, I, I know I'm right about this, y'all, because verse 6 says, and if you highlight in your Bible, please highlight this verse here. You need to memorize this one, y'all. Verse 6 says, somebody need to make this personal. Anybody here facing enemies? Anybody here feel like you're fenced in and surrounded? Well, verse 6 here is for you. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Y'all don't believe that this morning. The law is on. If you believe that this morning, it would change your whole attitude toward everything going around. The Lord is on my side. 
what can man do unto and, and what he's saying here is that God is in control I said God is in control you see the temptation is for us to fear man more than we fear can, can we let that sink in for a second that, that's why some of us are scared to go to work tomorrow morning because we fear more than we fear and so a Palm Sunday praise is birthed, is developed, is matured through the trials and tribulations of life. Have you learned to praise God through the good and the bad? Come on now, don't play with me this morning. Have you learned to praise Him through both the good? It's easy to praise Him when things are going well. But can you praise him when all hell is breaking out around you? Now stay with me, y'all. Stay with me. Look at verse 15. This is critical here, y'all. He, he called out to God in this distress. God answered him. And verse 15 says, Now... That the psalmist has passed the test. And now that he's learned the lesson. Now he begins to sing songs of salvation. He, he sings. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my eyes. He sings. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. In other words. In other words. The psalmist begins to get his praise on, y'all. I said the psalmist begins to shout. If, if, if he lived in our day and time, he would say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? He, he, he would say, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Now, now, he didn't start singing until he had his experience with God. Now, here's the point I'm trying to get to, y'all. Keep in mind here that all of this singing and all of this loud shouting was happening before he got to church. I said all of this praising, all of this singing was happening before he got to church. Why? Because the praise of gratitude Thanks God for deliverance when God delivers. If God bless you on Monday, you don't supposed to sit on that praise all week until Sunday. You ought to praise him on And so, our praise of gratitude says to God that we don't take for granted what God is doing in our lives. It says that, God, we're thankful, we're grateful to God for loving us in spite of ourselves. It, it acknowledges the fact that when others gave up on us because of our shortcomings, God continued to love us and gave us another chance. That's why verse 16, verse 17 messed me all up. Verse 
17, he says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Somebody need to hear me this morning. God delivered him. God saved him. He didn't deserve it. He began to praise God. And because God was so faithful to him, because God was so merciful to him, he stood up in his spirit and said, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Hear, hear this now, y'all. Hear this. Even though he was in a situation that, have, that could have potentially killed him, God didn't let him die. Now, now for, for some of us, we, we may not fully appreciate that. Because some of us have lived on the, the right side of the tra tracks all of our lives. You know, you know, I, I tease y'all. I say some of y'all never stepped on a roach before, right? Y'all, y'all so good, y'all so holy. Y'all ain't never did nothing wrong before. But there's some of us. There's some of us that God stepped in our lives, changed us, turned us over. We didn't deserve it. Listen. He saved me from a situation that I should have died in. And here's the point. Here's the point. I began to understand that God had a purpose for my life. I said God had a purpose for your life, y'all. And the purpose includes telling everybody. Somebody say everybody. everybody. Telling everybody how grateful you are for God delivering you, for God saving you from your enemies. I'm talking about the praise of gratitude this morning. Do I have any grateful people here this morning? Characteristic of a Palm Sunday praise. We, we did come to celebrate, didn't we? Yeah. A, a, a second characteristic of a Palm Sunday praise is that it is a praise in the congregation. Amen. It's a praise, somebody say, at church. At church. Now, I know y'all. I think I make this stuff up, right? Look, look at verse 19. Look at verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give. In other words, in other words, the psalmist was so excited about what the Lord had done in his life that he could not wait to get to church. He, he couldn't wait to get to church so that he can praise and thank God some more. He, he couldn't wait to get to church so that he could give a prayer of thanks to God for this victory. He, he wanted to offer up praises of thanksgiving for the Lord's goodness. He wanted to offer up praises of thanksgiving for the Lord's goodness. How many know that the Lord is good? But don't miss it, y'all. He wants to offer up praises of thanksgiving for the Lord's saving goodness. Listen. With the saints of God. I said 
with the saints of God. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about this morning? Has God ever moved in your life in such a powerful way during the week that you couldn't wait to get to church on Sunday? Now, you, 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 you praise them all by yourself in the house. You praise them in the bathroom at work and you praise them in the car while driving home. But then, you had to go back and live and work with people who don't really know the Lord. Per perhaps that's why David says, Oh, magnify the Lord and let... Y'all better help me preach this one. <laughs> Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You see, the psalmist knew, hear me today, y'all. The psalmist knew that if the congregation in the Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown could get on one accord, and praise God together. Then the manifest presence of God. Will show up in our midst. I said if we could just get on one floor. We're, we're all together in one place quiet. But if we could just get on one accord. With one agenda. And praise God. Somebody say together. Then the manifest presence of God. Would show up. In our midst. That, that's why. Sister Hill. That's why our, our four parents used to say. When Jesus shows up. Jesus shows out. When he shows up. He shows out. I, I wish somebody knew what I was talking about here this morning. See, when, when God manifests his presence, can I take my time right here, y'all? When, when God, I, I'm not talking about the mayor showing up. I'm not talking about some athlete or politician showing up. I said when God manifests his presence, we are supposed to lift up our hands unto God in the congregation. When, when God shows up, we're to clap our hands and we're to shout to God with loud voices of joy. We're, we're to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I said when God shows up with the praise and with the trumpet and with the tambourine and the dance I said when God shows up The, the point here the point here is that there must be room in our worship experience for spontaneous praise offered to God in the midst of the congregation I said there gotta be some room for spontaneous praise know that God sometimes interrupts our 
program for station identification. It's not on the order of service. I know you're supposed to sing here. I know we're supposed to do this here, but when God shows up, He will interrupt your little program. Because God will sometimes break in so that He can give us a breakthrough. Listen, y'all, listen. I I'm trying to move on, but after all God has brought the Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown through in the last year, somebody ought to be praising God in the sanctuary. After all the Lord has brought us through as a race of people, somebody ought to be giving God some praise. We ought to offer unto God the sacrifice of praise from the fruit of our lips. Uh, do, do we still believe in having church up here? It's not right to have church sometimes, don't you know that? Hallelujah. 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 I feel him interrupting the program.
I'm going to. I got I to gotta cut across the field a little bit today. Because I got one more point to give you before I go. And I, I feel that the Lord wants me to, to get that across. real quick y'all when we do as David commands us in Psalm 103 to forget not all his benefits you know some of us some of us have a short memory so a lot of us have have spiritual amnesia but the Bible says that we are not to forget all of his benefits. Because, listen, when we don't forget his benefits, we'll learn to praise God for what he's already done. When you don't forget what the Lord has done, then you can praise God for what he's already doing. And when you you remember what God has done. You will praise God for what he is about to do. Praise him for what he's already done. Praise him for what he's doing right now. And then praise him for what he's about to do. And see, choir, when you get in that place, you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. So a Palm Sunday praise is a praise of gratitude. Oh, Sister Solomon is fine. She dances in the spirit all the time. Don't worry about it. She just fine. This is a praise of gratitude. Somebody say gratitude. A Palm Sunday praise is a praise in the congregation. Somebody say at church. And finally, a Palm Sunday praise is a perpetual praise. It, it's a praise that will never stop. Amen. I said it's a praise that will, somebody say, never stop. Amen. I'm going to cut across the field on this here, y'all. Because Let me just say it this way. I said it would never stop. Can, can we take our minds back to Palm Sunday? If you remember, Jesus was riding on the donkey. But if, if you know the geography of the city, he was coming down from an elevated place. Yes. And so what that means is everybody was in the valley. And they could see him yes. coming down. Yes. I wish somebody knew what I was talking about this one. I said they were in the valley. Yes. But they could yes. see him yes. coming down. says that when Jesus comes back again y'all yeah, yeah. believe Jesus is coming back again don't you yeah. the Bible says that when Jesus returns 
every eye will. Every eye. For the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of an archangel. With the sound of the trumpet of God. And we who are God's children will join the angels in singing. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And from then on. Somebody say from then on. We will always be with the Lord. We'll, we'll reign with him and praise him perpetually under a new heaven and a new earth. You, you, you know what perpetually means, don't you? Perpetually means, somebody say, from now on. Come on, say it like you mean. Say from now on. Yeah. Perpetually means that our praise will never end. I said it'll never end, y'all. And Sister Jetta, since we're going to praise him forever, we need to learn how to praise him right. I said, since we got to praise him forever, we need to learn how to praise him right here and right now. Because a Palm Sunday praise will last for eternity. Which means that forever and ever and ever and ever. And when that's done, forever, 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 and forever. And when that's done, forever, 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 and forever. And when that's done, forever, forever, and forever. I'm talking about a Palm Sunday praise to take you. I'm going to get out your way, y'all. But I feel something pushing me this morning. <sighs> Corinthian, the winds of the Spirit are blowing in this place. And if we can learn not to resist, but to open our hearts like the sails of a ship. You, you know what? You, you seen the sails of a ship before? When the wind gets in it, the wind drives the direction of the ship. The sails are not afraid of the wind. Perhaps they feel uncomfortable because they're no longer in control, but because they trust the wind. Well, you remember I told you before that Jesus said that the Spirit of God is just like the wind. The wind blows where it wants. No one knows where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Why don't you bow your heads, please. Father, we thank and praise you today for who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness to us, your children. Thank you, God, for reminding us of who you are and what you have done for us, your people. 
Thank you for being faithful when we were unfaithful. Thank you for not giving up on us when we've given up on ourselves. Thank you, God, for rescuing us when our backs were up against the wall and giving us another chance. Thank you for delivering someone from the point of death. Thank you for the testimonies that have come forth where we have declared that I will not die but live and to continue to declare the works of the Lord. God, we thank you for Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. God, we pray today for any man, any woman, any boy or girl under the sound of my voice who does not know this Jesus, who, who has not experienced your salvation and therefore they don't fully appreciate a Palm Sunday praise. God, I pray that you would open up hearts and minds Give someone faith to believe today. Repent of their sins and trust you as their savior. Have your way, O oh God. And we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. Let us all say amen. amen. Well, everyone, please stand on your feet. There may be someone here this morning. Who needs to meet Jesus? Someone here today who needs a fresh start. Someone here today who, who's living under the guilt and the weight of their past. We, we talked about in Bible study the other day that God is not mad at us. God is not counting your sins against you because his son gave his life as a ransom for many all he desires of us is to turn to him and he will give you the gift of salvation it's called grace you didn't deserve it didn't do anything to earn it he gives it to you. Is there one this morning? Church ought to be praying. There's someone here who may be feeling a tugging in their heart or in their mind. You, you feel like you want to come, but you're so concerned about other folks around you looking. Just know that we've all been there before. And I guarantee you that if you step out on faith, Jesus will meet you right here. There's no one that I know who has ever really met Jesus that will say, man, I, I regret doing that. I, I, I you know, I, I got caught up in, uh, no, never. Do I have any witnesses here? Has anybody here met Jesus? Does anybody have any regrets for giving your life to Jesus? He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll give you a purpose for living. He'll place your feet on a solid ground. Second call. You may already be a Christian and you don't have a church home. Well, every Christian needs a church home. Every Christian needs to be connected with other believers so that we can grow and go together as a family. We can learn together, support one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, challenge one another. As we do God's business in this world. He came 
He gave his life. He was buried. And on the third day, God the Father raised him from the dead so that we would have everlasting life. Is there one this morning? Lift your hands, everybody lift your hands. Lift your hands. Today, we worship you. One more time, one more time. We worship. Worship him out of your heart today. Lift our hands to you today, God. Amen. As we be prepare to look to the Lord for his blessings and benediction, I pray that you will go out of here with a Palm Sunday praise. A praise of gratitude, a praise in the congregation, and a praise that begins now, but that will last forever. Amen. Um, let's, yeah, let's be seated. I'm, I'm so excited. I almost forgot about communion, y'all. Thank you.
said, after we partake of the Lord's table, that everyone would wait briefly and then have a brief prayer over the palms before they are distributed. Amen. Amen. says that on the night in which our Lord and Savior was betrayed, he sat at supper with his disciples and he took bread and broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Amen. And then after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink this cup, you can proclaim my death and suffering until I return. Let us drink together.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your Son. We celebrate this great salvation that we have as a result of his life, his death, his shed blood, and his resurrection on our behalf. We thank you, God, for Palm Sunday. We thank you for the praise that raises up in our hearts as we reflect on your great salvation and your promise that you are returning once again. God, we pray your blessings upon these moments. We pray that they will be symbols of victory, that they will be a reminder of you and all that you have done, and remind us to, to look up, because our redemption draws nigh. God, we love you, and we thank you. Bless these palms, bless every home that they go to. We love you, and we thank you for all these things, man. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 amen.